everyone. Welcome to this edition of the NITEX uh, Colloquium. This afternoon, we are very lucky to have with us Professor Sandro uh, Scandolo from, uh, from the ICTP, from the Abdul Salam International Center for Theoretical Physics uh, in Trieste. And, uh, and Sandro has been, uh, as you will hear, <laughs> been involved from the very beginning with the International Year for Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. And this, this evening, he will share with us uh, some of the aims and perspective of this year of, of, of celebration. Uh, as I said, Sandro uh, is the coordinator of the research division at, uh, at ICTP, and he's also the deputy secretary general of the International Union of Pure and Applied uh, Physics. Yeah, uh, He's a fellow of the American Physical Society, and um, traditionally his research is in, in computational modeling of, uh, of materials, but he probably wants, that will be an occasion for another invitation to speak <laughs> in another colloquium, uh, not, not, not today. Yeah. So, Sandro, uh, people are here to listen to you, not, not to me. So you, you, you're welcome to, to share the screen and, um, and, and, and start your presentation. And while you do that, I just remind the, 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 the participants to please make use of the Q&A to ask questions or at the end of the talk, you can raise your hand and I can uh, give you the right to speak. And after the colloquium, Sandra agreed uh, to meet with us uh, in, in our informal social room in, in Kumo space. So Sandra, please, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francesco, for this opportunity. It's really great to be uh, to be able to say something about this um, series of events that uh, we are organizing to celebrate uh, the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. Uh, uh, be myself an employee of ICTP. I'm not, I, I believe that many of you uh, are familiar with ICTP. It's something that really is, uh, is very close to our hearts. And so I'm, I'm really happy to be, to be here and, and give you some, some information about, uh, about this. By the way, uh, I will be myself uh, together with the uh, director of ICTP in South Africa uh, soon uh, on the occasion of the World Science Forum. So um, uh, I would really be, I would love to be able to meet uh, whoever is, uh, is interested in person. Uh, and not them I mean, on remote like uh, like uh, we're doing here. All right. So what we, what you see here is the uh, the UN General Assembly, which is where the uh, International Year was proclaimed uh, at the end of uh, 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 last year. Uh, it was a big decision. Uh, it was announced by the representative of Honduras, uh, which you see on the right side, and it's really something that uh, you know um, uh, is the is the result of years and years of uh, of preparation by a number of uh, people, and you'll see many throughout these uh, presentations, especially of, of, of institutions. Um, let me see if I can move forward. Yes, so first of all, uh, why do we need an international year to, uh, to celebrate basic science for sustainable development? This is because if you think about basic sciences, there's a lot of course that people uh, uh, say about the importance of applied sciences, uh, uh, but for basic sciences, this is not obvious. And it's not obvious and not always uh, and everywhere considered uh, uh, for the role they, uh, they play in advancing uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the development of society, environment, and economic development. Uh, also, of course, as you probably all are you know, aware, uh, it's really through curiosity-driven sciences that we get excited about our world. And, uh, knowing more about how the world functions, nature functions, is something that keeps all of us excited, and perhaps also in perspective, uh, makes us more aware of the need to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to look for sustainable solutions for, uh, that come from science and, and technology. And of course, uh, the National Year builds on uh, several other initiatives, including uh, previous scientific international years with the International Year of Physics, and many years ago, the International Year of Light, uh, and more recently, the International Year of Crystallography, and the International Year of uh, uh, the Periodic Table, uh, all of which, by the way, were uh, essentially uh, run under the umbrella of, uh, of UNESCO, of which ICTP, my own institution, is a category one institute. So um, the there will be, of course, uh, uh, discussions on many different topics, but the main ones, of course, the ones at least the steering committee has decided to uh, put more emphasis is the, uh, in, uh, the, uh, the, the issue of inclusivity, making sure we are all uh, uh, the entire society, the entire community of scientists uh, participates in the development and in the uh, deciding the directions uh, 
of the future directions of, uh, of scientists, of science. Uh, of course, there will be emphasis on the, uh, the need to strengthen education and training in, uh, in, in basic sciences. Uh, of course, uh, funding is, uh, is also relevant. There will be initiatives trying to uh, you know, raise more support for basic science. And also another important aspect is the uh, disseminate uh, uh, information and awareness about uh, the need to be more open when it comes to science. As you probably know, UNESCO has recently issued uh, a recommendation on open science, which was endorsed by all its member states. Uh, there are now more than 150 member states uh, in UNESCO. They're all, they, they have all endorsed this recommendation, which uh, you know, gives guidelines about what it means uh, at the practical level to implement uh, open science in your countries and in your, uh, in your institutions. Now, uh, it's, it's a collective uh, endeavor and a collective initiative. Uh, which has been involving many, many organizations, uh, including, as you can see, ICTP, ICTP and many others. I'm sure you recognize logos you're familiar with uh, here. Let me just say that the leading union, uh, scientific union, which was behind the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the preparation of this uh, year was the uh, International Union of Physics of Pure and Applied Physics, uh, IUPAP. And I will say a few words about that uh, in a moment. There are several supporters also in the, in the African continent. Um, and again, I'm sure you will recognize some of your favorite institutions in, uh, uh, um, in Africa. They are all supporting uh, this international year. Now, what does this consist? Well, uh, there are a number of so-called flagship events of which the main one was the inauguration, which took place this summer. By the way, it was initially thought to be 2022, but it's now because of COVID, it was essentially moved by six months. So it was inaugurated in the middle of 2022 and it will be closed in uh, essentially uh, the end of summer next year with the ceremony in, uh, in Geneva. And throughout the year, so this uh, six months in 2022 and a few months also in 2023, there will be a number of events uh, of which uh, some flagship ones are listed here. There was one in Vietnam recently, uh, one in Serbia, and there will be also a few also in Africa. Uh, the, 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 there is a, the date of the one, uh, sort of the flagship event for Africa has not been decided yet, but it will probably be in Rwanda sometime in spring uh, 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 next year. And together with that, there will be many, many other events. In fact, uh, if you have events to propose, uh, feel free to send them to the attention of the International Year through the website. Uh, there is a form where you can uh, uh, promote uh, your own events, of course, as long as they are uh, in line with the principles and the, uh, and the themes uh, of, the, uh, of the International Year. There are also uh, local national committees. Uh, just check the webpage, you'll find plenty of information if you want to actively participate uh, in the, uh, in the International year. Now, what, 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 what we would like you to contribute as a scientist? Uh, of course, I mean, we all as scientists are fully aware of the fact that uh, some of the science we do, at least uh, some of the science we do, not everything, as is directly related to the sustainable development goals, which is our main uh, sort of uh, framework uh, to, uh, that guide us in the uh, in, in, uh, in moving towards a sustainable development. For example, I mean, we are aware that research in biology has, to, has a strong impact in health and well-being, uh, water resources, uh, uh, life on land, and, and, and many other things. Uh, there are issues that uh, where, where actually we need new basic knowledge. I mean, there are uh, aspects of uh, uh, water sanitation, for example, which, would des which are desperately in need for uh, more fundamental research in uh, fields like uh, I mean, chemistry and physics. I myself, I'm a material, I mean a physicist, but uh, close to chemistry and material sciences. And, um, uh, and so, we, I mean, the expectation is that there will be new discoveries in areas that have a direct impact uh, on sustainable development also coming from, uh, from these fields. And of course, uh, there are the um, uh, so-called externalities, that is the fact that the basic science, by doing basic science, you can actually help uh, progress so the entire society towards the achievement of sustainable development goals that are actually outside of uh, science and technology, like gender equality, for example. We are aware that uh, basic science are, are one of the fields of uh, say, um, uh, uh, um, research where the percentage of uh, women is still uh, com com uh, in relative terms very low. And so through progress uh, in our field, we can also contribute to progress uh, uh, in, society, in society as a whole. 
Um, as I said, I mean, uh, behind the establishment of the international year, uh, there's the International Union of Pure and Applied Physics. So let me, you know, just give me a chance to say a few words about IUPAP um, uh, as the leading organization of the international year. IUPAP is one of the oldest organizations. Uh, uh, in fact, it is still the only global organization of physicists. It's, it's, it's essentially the union that uh, uh, brings together uh, physical societies from, from all over the world. It was in fact established uh, uh, more than a century ago. Uh, we celebrated the uh, centenary this year in Trieste. Uh, the Secretariat of IOPAP moved to Trieste recently. And so we celebrated here in July, uh, the centenary of, uh, of, the, uh, of IOPAP with a series of panels on uh, several themes uh, uh, ranging from uh, uh, gender balance in physics uh, to uh, physics uh, uh, for development, uh, uh, physics and industry, uh, societal impacts, uh, funding, uh, so on and so forth. We had four uh, Nobel laureates uh, uh, joining these celebrations uh, um, and contributing with their own research, but also with more, more general considerations about uh, where physics is going and how can physics be more effective in, uh, uh, in, uh, in um, say, uh, in having an impact uh, on, uh, on society. In fact, uh, the, 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 the main goal uh, scope of IUPAP is to assist in the worldwide development of physics, uh, foster international co cooperation, but in particular help uh, application of physics towards solving problems of concern uh, to humanity. So you can see this as a huge network, perhaps the main network that uh, where you know, concerns, issues, and uh, 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 discussions about the future of physics are discussed. Uh, <clears throat> And hopefully, uh, with uh, with uh, converged on uh, on uh, on uh, on real on real actions. And uh, the first president of uh, IUPAP was uh, Bill Bragg. Uh, you all know, of course, Bill Bragg because of his contributions to X-ray crystallography, uh, X-ray diffraction. Now, IUPAP today is uh, uh, its governance is. Uh, um, uh, composed of uh, uh, member states, essentially member territories, actually. We have to be very careful about that, um, of which uh, some of them are in Africa. Uh, the hope is to expand this membership. And in fact, one of the main, uh, um, uh, say, uh, the vice president for membership is uh, from South Africa, Nithya Chetty. Um, so if there are among you any uh, you know, representatives of African countries that are not listed here as members, please try to you know, uh, encourage your own country to, uh, uh, to become a member of, uh, of IUPAP. The structure of IUPAP is a bit complex, but it uh, uh, relies on the existence of commissions, technical commissions, which uh, uh, discuss uh, uh, issues uh, relative to uh, different fields of physics. So there are commissions in nuclear physics, in condensed matter physics, uh, in uh, particle physics, uh, physics for development. Uh, there are also working groups uh, uh, and other uh, small groups that look into more, uh, uh, um, say, uh, 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 overarching themes like uh, you know, gender, like uh, development, and so on and so, on and so forth. In practice, IUPAP uh, sponsors a number of, or endorses a number of conferences every year. Uh, there is an application uh, uh, procedure the year before, and then these conferences are accepted for funding and for support. These have to be conferences that uh, are, of course, of global uh, reach. There cannot be just conferences, local conferences. And also, perhaps, the most important uh, uh, role of IUPAP today, at least, in this uh, in the current uh, uh, global uh, situation is the fact that uh, we issue position papers and statements. We've issued, if you can check, you can check the website of IUPAP and you'll find a list of uh, mm -hmm. uh, statements. We've been issuing statements about, of concern about the situation in Iran, in Ukraine, especially of course, uh, in support of uh, our colleagues, uh, physicists uh, um, in, 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 in those countries. Uh, we are of course, uh, strongly uh, committed to support the free circulation of scientists, uh, uh, for example, uh, we made sure that by condemning, after having condemned uh, the uh, invasion of uh, Ukraine by Russia, we make we make sure that uh, Russian scientists are not uh, kept in, isola in isolation. Uh, we make sure that the uh, bridges between scientists are always uh, kept uh, 
you know, open and accessible. And we want to make sure that the uh, international physics community is able to continue collaborating in spite of the, you know, very uh, 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 the, the terrible boundary conditions uh, in which some of our colleagues are forced to work, especially the ones in Ukraine. We had uh, during the centenary uh, celebrations, we had uh, connected uh, with us, uh, the uh, president of the uh, Ukrainian Academy of Sciences uh, who was connecting from Kiev and it was really, uh, you know, describing for us the, uh, the terrible conditions in which scientists and physicists are, are working in the country at the moment, uh, essentially uh, without, with very little possibility to, uh, to do research and to keep connections with the external world, as you probably know already. Uh, in addition, uh, IUPAP awards uh, prizes, uh, both to, uh, you know, senior scientists, senior physicists for scientific achievement, but also for junior scientists for early career uh, achievements and there are many prizes. So if there is any you know, young and brilliant uh, uh, physicist among you or you want to support, uh, please take a look at the IUPEP webpage and, and, and solicit nominations for uh, um, early career scientists in your own field. Each commission that is every field of physics has its own uh, prize for early career uh, physicists. So there is certainly something for uh, any, any of you essentially in the um, uh, 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 among the possible prizes uh, that uh, IUPAP uh, issues. Okay, allow me now to uh, uh, make a few uh, considerations, uh, my, my personal considerations about the, uh, uh, the um, physics uh, development, basic sciences, and especially its global perspective. I mean, uh, working for a UN, for a United Nations organization, I feel myself compelled to uh, say something of my own regarding the global perspective of uh, uh, basic science for sustainable development. And of course, the obvious reason why we should all be uh, seeing this as a global challenge is the fact that uh, the major global challenges, challenges that we're facing today, the society is facing today, have a strong basic science component. I think of climate change, for example, right? Climate change is a, a global challenge uh, and it's truly global in the sense that uh, uh, the countries that are currently suffering the most from, uh, from uh, global emissions, from carbon dioxide emissions are countries that have not been uh, emitting their own CO2 over the years, right? So it's very important that uh, the consequences of climate change are uh, known to everybody, to the entire scientific community, to the entire global population. So that we, um, you know, countries that uh, are currently affected by this, but have not contributed to the, to the problem can raise their voice, uh, for example, at the international meetings and can make their voice heard essentially, right? And, and to that extent, uh, uh, climate uh, mathematical models and mathem models based on physics uh, are extremely valuable. Uh, we, are, we have seen recently the recent reports of the uh, IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change, uh, how accurate can predictions be uh, uh, in terms of climate, even you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 years uh, uh, from now, um, and how these predictions can be you know, uh, used to inform uh, policy. And I think it's everybody's duty, and especially on the occasion of this international year, uh, it's the duty of scientists to make sure that this uh, information, this message, uh, you know, goes through uh, the, the, and, and reaches politicians at all levels, because this is really crucial for the future of our, of humanity as a whole, I should say. Uh, spreading diseases, I, didn't, I don't need to, uh, you know, explain why this is important. I mean, we're just barely resurfacing from, uh, from, uh, from a major crisis in the last uh, two or three years, and again, modeling uh, development in, uh, in, in, uh, in medicine have been instrumental in, in, in ensuring that humanity could, uh, you know, uh, resurrect from, the, uh, from this uh, tremendous, I mean, pandemic. Um, of course, earthquakes and, and tsunamis are another example of uh, global uh, <clears throat> of global challenges, right? I mean, uh, something takes place uh, uh, on the boundaries. I mean, I live in Italy, and which is, of course, uh, on the side of the northern side of the Mediterranean Sea, and it would take nothing. I mean, it would take uh, an earthquake, a major earthquake on the northern uh, shore of the Mediterranean Sea to cause a huge tsunami on the northern coast. So we all need to exchange information about uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the earthquakes, tsunamis, I mean, at the global level. We cannot just restrict our knowledge and our, um, uh, you know, uh, studies to, uh, to, to the local level. 
Uh, let me mention also the issue of no nuclear safety. I mean, uh, I, ICTP, uh, where I work, is um, is under UNESCO, but also under the International Agency for Atomic Energy. So I need to say a few words about uh, nuclear safety, um, because if countries can decide, like mine, like Italy, for example, not to have a, a, a nuclear power in the in the in the country, uh, we still heavily rely on on, uh, on nuclear energy produced uh, elsewhere. And also we need to make sure that whoever uh, develops uh, nuclear power plants and nuclear energy production does it in a safe and secure way because the risks are uh, global. They're not just local risks, right? So this is exactly the role that the uh, IAEA has to create standards, to do research, fundamental research in uh, uh, in atomic energy to make sure that uh, whoever decides independently as a country to uh, have and to develop uh, 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 nuclear power production does it in a most uh, in the safest and most secure uh, possible way. And of course, there's the issue of renewable energies where we we are all uh, aware of the fact that uh, this heavily relies on uh, 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 developments on research, basic research done at the level of materials, for example, to develop uh, uh, better materials that are more effective in capturing the uh, uh, sunlight. Uh, okay, at the ICTP, we have a strong activity, research activity, for example, uh, in the development and design of materials for, um, uh, for nuclear energy. But at the same time, let me also emphasize that uh, a global perspective cannot forget that uh, uh, we need to be geographically diverse and inclusive. I mean, there's no solution that works for, I mean, same for all. Uh, solutions to global challenges may differ, you know, west to east and north to south. So it is also important to make sure that we are able to focus on regional uh, technological uh, uh, priorities with, uh, you know, we have to take a regional approach to uh, science, especially also, especially basic science. I mean, typical examples are, in fact, uh, it is, is in Africa. Uh, Africa is incredibly rich in, in natural resources. Things of, uh, think of minerals, for example, uh, and most of which are actually just uh, sold without any further processing to, uh, uh, to, to the north, to the west of the world. Uh, but if uh, these countries were able to exploit and add value to their local uh, natural resources, that would also contribute enormously to, to economic and social development at, uh, at the regional level. So let me say that uh, it is important that uh, problems are uh, addressed at the global level, but it's also equally important that uh, science uh, uh, continues to be geographic, geographically diverse and inclusive in the sense that uh, different countries may have different uh, priorities when it comes to decisions regarding, uh, regarding basic science. Uh, in fact, uh, unfortunately, this is not necessarily the case in the sense that uh, not all countries are put in the same condition when it comes to ability to do research uh, uh, for their own priorities, right? This is now a very uh, general, uh, you know, picture of uh, um, how much uh, different uh, places of the world are active in terms of uh, research in physics, for example, okay? So what you see here is the... Um, uh, 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 the, the six continents with their um, uh, GDP, uh, populate, percentage of population, percentage of DGP uh, worldwide, and also percentage of uh, papers in all fields, scientific papers in all fields, and percentage of all papers in physics. Uh, so the global percentage uh, with respect to the total world of papers published in physics in, the, in that uh, specific, uh, specific region. So uh, w w this is what, what, what emerges from this uh, slide is that uh, there are, there are uh, areas of the world where, of course, physics is very developed, uh, you know, like Europe, like uh, North America, um, and, and to some extent Asia, certain part, part of Asia. But there are places like South America and Africa, of course, is uh, definitely uh, probably the the the. Uh, the the, um, the, weakest, uh, the weakest part, where in spite of the fact that 15% uh, of the world population is there, uh, only uh, Africa produces only 1.5% of the uh, physics papers uh, uh, at the global level. So there is an order of magnitude uh, you know, a mismatch between uh, what would be the strength in terms of just population and what is actually the strength in terms of research and physics. Of course, we all know the reasons. These are obvious facts, perhaps, but I think it's important uh, every now and then to, uh, you know, have a clear quantitative picture of uh, where the problem is. Uh, 
uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, research output, at least like like it is here. In fact, uh, um, uh, some people say that uh, uh, just the number of papers is not enough to measure the ability of uh, a community, a person, a country to produce uh, science. So what I did actually, I don't know if you're familiar, there's a beautiful website called Saimago, JR, uh, where you can actually calculate the, I'm sure you know what the H index is for a scientist, right? The H index of the scientist is the number of uh, um, the papers that got the number of, number of citations, uh, at least as, I mean, <laughs> the total number of papers that got that cited at least uh, that number of times, right? So uh, if, uh, if I have an, an H index of uh, say 30, it means that 30 of my papers have been cited at least 30 times, right? So it's a way to measure the scientific output of uh, something. Uh, normally it is used for uh, people, for scientists, but in this website, what you find is the H index of uh, entire countries, right? So you can measure the scientific output by looking at how many papers have been cited, how many times by say the US or several other countries. Now, this is probably not an interesting uh, uh, slide, but uh, let me show you another one, which is, uh, I mean, closer geographically at least to, uh, to South Africa, where you see uh, the same, the same uh, information for, uh, for Africa. Now, of course, uh, we all know that South Africa dominates uh, science. Oh, by the way, Egypt here is not listed because Egypt in this uh, thing is considered as Middle East. Uh, so Egypt would be there close to South Africa, of course. Uh, but the, uh, the, um, the sad part of this uh, table is that uh, with exception perhaps of, you know, of a handful of countries, the rest of Africa is really lagging behind in terms of research, uh, research output is physics. Uh, and now sad this is, uh, is uh, is uh, is clear from the from the rightmost table uh, the h index now uh, i took the liberty of checking francesco your h index and your h index is i guess 47 or something around 50 let's say right now of course francesco petruccione is a top scientist that uh, we all know but uh, it's a single scientist and as you can see if francesco a single scientist was put on this table he would be actually the fifth uh, 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 line on this table. So a single scientist uh, in South Africa would count more than all but uh, four uh, African countries. Mm -hmm. So I think this is actually quite, uh, uh, you know, uh, I would say depressing as a, as, a, as, a, as a table because it really shows how much work needs to be done to make sure that the scientific output in physics uh, 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 grows uh, when I'm actually, I see that there are a number of questions in the chat. Uh, let me check. Oh no, these are just technical things, sorry. Yeah, no, sorry, it's uh, someone's uh, connection is not so good. Okay, okay, great. Don't, don't worry. And sorry, Francesco, if I took the liberty of uh, using your H index as a comparison here. But... It, there is no negative public publicity. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so now uh, the, the, let me show you another, another slide, which I think is quite interesting. And it's uh, um, uh, how much is this connected with funding? Uh, yes, definitely, it is connected with funding. If you now uh, draw, I mean, compare the uh, uh, research and development spending of a country with uh, their output in terms of citations, as you can see, I mean, there is a quite nice correlation. That is, the more you invest, the more you get in terms of scientific out output. But there are, of course, interesting outliers, like, for example, uh, countries like the Emirates, Qatar, Kazakhstan, Luxembourg, rich countries, which invest a lot and get quite less than other countries in terms of scientific output. Uh, there are also you know, outliers on the positive side, take countries like Iran or Bangladesh, uh, surprisingly, in spite of their investment, uh, modest investments in science, uh, uh, their output in terms of citation. So there's more than just funding that counts when you, uh, when it comes to uh, measure scientific output. Uh, this is just, I mean, a bit, a take home message for that. Uh, another top, the take home message is if you just take linear regression on this line, turns out that the cost of a single citation is $50,000. Uh, can you believe that? Uh, that means, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, by the way, think about it. Next time you, you add a citation to one of your papers, you're adding $50,000 value uh, to, the, uh, to the country, that, uh, to your country, essentially, not to the country of the authors of the paper you're citing, essentially. Uh, quite interesting as a, as a, but again, it's not just funding. There's more than that. And you can see it in this, uh, you know, in the outliers of this uh, uh, correlation. 
Now, let me add uh, another consideration out of my own. Huh? This is really personal considerations. Now, this is a question that uh, I'm actually asked uh, several times when I give these uh, similar talks uh, to a general audience. Um, the, the question is the following. I mean, basic science is, of course, important. And we all recognize, especially we scientists, recognize the importance of basic science for development. Uh, but should basic sciences be a priority everywhere, right? Of course, in, at CERN, in Geneva, in a very rich country, in a very rich continent, it makes sense to invest uh, in the, say, detecting an invisible particle like the X. But does it make sense for, uh, say, a sub-Saharan country, for example, to invest? Aren't there other priorities that we need to address before we start investing in basic sciences? Now, this is actually a very important question. I think we have to be, you know, we have to metabolize it, uh, we scientists, uh, in some form, because this is the question that politicians will ask, uh, that society will ask, uh, taxpayers will ask, of course. Uh, now, I've uh, given this talk actually to, uh, to also to schools, high schools and middle schools and universities, and I always ask this question to the students. I mean, you're given this huge amount of funds. What do you do with that? Now, of course, uh, if, uh, in, in, in a primary school, they would say, oh, I want to feed, uh, you know, one million people, of course. Uh, if you go to a high school or to a, say, general audience, they would say, well, I would be the hospital or a school, for example, right? With advanced. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, very few of you, uh, very few of the ones that uh, uh, to which I am asking this question would say that uh, I would build a research institute. But that's exactly the core of the problem, as far as I can see. It's very difficult to realize and to be aware that investing in high level education, high level research, including basic science, is indeed crucial for the development of, of a country. There are obvious things like the multiplicative effect. If you have a, a university professor, you'll have 10 university students who will then become 10 high school teachers and so on, so on all the way to about 4,000 primary school students, right? And the important thing to consider here is that you will never be able to build a correct pyramid if you don't start investing, if you don't invest also at the top to make sure that you have a, a well-trained uh, university professor who can actually teach the, the, his, his or her students properly so that at the end that this pyramid, you know, stands uh, 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 without need for external, uh, for external output. Of course, Having a, a strong research and higher education system generates other types of precious skills. I mean, engineers, doctors, managers, teachers, politicians. And in the long run, I believe it frees countries from dependency on foreign aid, foreign aid, which is one of the major problems that I mean, the poorest countries are facing uh, in the world. But there is also another aspect which I think is very important. And this is actually now coming very close to uh, say what is actually the, IC, the reason why ICTP uh, has been created. Why should elevated thought, that is thought, uh, say, why should the discovery of the Higgs, for example, right, of this particle, be a prerogative of, of the rich? I mean, in fact, if you think about it, uh, this is actually even uh, 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 enshrined in the, in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, Article 27. For those of you who don't remember, it says that everyone has the right freely to participate in the cultural life of the community, to enjoy the arts and to share in scientific ad uh, advancement and its benefits, right? So scientific advancement and its benefits are actually part of uh, uh, the uh, human rights of every human being. Now, this brings me sort of naturally to uh, a beautiful story, which is the story of uh, Abdul Salam. Abdul Salam, the creator of ICTP, uh, and one of the top uh, 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 theoretical physicists of the past century. Uh, he was born in uh, what is now Pakistan at the time he was a British colony in the, at the beginning of the past century. Uh, and uh, essentially, I mean, he managed to go to study in the UK and he became uh, 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 an outstanding theoretical physicist. He's essentially the one behind the standard model, uh, together with uh, Wein Weinberg and Glashow, with which, by the way, he shared the Nobel in physics in 1979. The first Muslim scientist, by the way, to get the Nobel Prize. But even before uh, getting the Nobel Prize, uh, he, uh, Salam felt 
believe that he was very lucky. He had been very lucky to be given this opportunity to you know, study in the UK and become an accomplished uh, uh, theoretical physicist. So he wanted to give the same opportunity to the you know, hundreds, thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, scientists all over the world who work in conditions that are extremely uh, difficult. Mm -hmm. And so he created, or he helped creating in the um, early 60s, uh, last century, 1960s, he helped creating um, uh, ICTP, the International Center for Theoretical Physics, to essentially to provide a, a hub, a place, a home for scientists from all over the world, especially from places where doing research is difficult. Uh, and, and so, you know, giving the, putting them in a condition to, uh, to do research at the best of possible. So ICTP, after more than 50 years, uh, is what is now considered a successful model of international cooperation. Um, I'm not sure how many have been to ICTP already. Uh, you're all, of course, more than, uh, I'd be really happy to, uh, to, uh, to, to have you here visiting. We run conferences, uh, schools, uh, um, and many other activities. Uh, we try to combine world-class research. So there are you know, um, uh, permanent uh, uh, in-house scientists, uh, um, doing research, but at the same, we, we, we run programs that uh, support the scientists in the developing world. Um, by the way, we had uh, several South Africans coming to, uh, to ICDP over the, over the years. Uh, we work in uh, some core research areas, uh, starting from, of course, high energy physics, which was the original uh, field of research of Abdul Salam, but then we expanded into condensed matter, physics, uh, mathematics, uh, earth system physics, and life sciences more recently. But also we have a number of special initiatives, particularly earmarked uh, to, uh, you know, to uh, achieving uh, goals that are closer to, uh, to sustainable development. Uh, for example, we have a, a section, a team, which is working on uh, uh, development of uh, connectivity, especially in Africa and in areas of the world where connectivity is extremely difficult. Uh, so they've been, for example, helping um, farmers uh, in Rwanda and other places to, uh, uh, to um, gather information about meteorological conditions uh, through um, you know, advanced uh, uh, but cheap, advanced but cheap uh, uh, um, uh, technology taking advantage of uh, uh, wireless connectivity and, uh, and Internet of Things. Uh, we have a group that studies, uh, uh, design, tries to design materials for uh, renewable energy uh, using uh, computational tools. Um, we have a large activity in high performance computing. We're also developing into quantum computing. And I'm actually glad to announce, or at least to, uh, to say that uh, we're going to start a very important partnership uh, with South Africa. Uh, through NITEX. Uh, and one of the reasons we are coming to South Africa in December is precisely to you know, get this, uh, this thing uh, started. So uh, uh, stay tuned. There will be, of course, uh, news uh, uh, about this uh, coming up uh, uh, soon uh, to reinforce collaboration between ICTP and, and South Africa. Um, our flagship program is a program that supports uh, where we, we we invite students from the least developed countries to come to ICTP, and we prepare uh, students for admission into PhD programs. So these are countries where, in some cases, there's not even a postgraduate program. Uh, I'm talking about you know, countries, some countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, but also uh, in uh, parts of uh, Central America. There are huge areas, I mean, at least uh, most of Central America, uh, actually hard to uh, imagine. Uh, there is no PhD program in physics in places like Nicaragua, Guatemala, uh, Salvador, uh, um, and Costa Rica. There is no PhD in physics. So we've been trying to support uh, these countries to develop uh, their own uh, postgraduate programs by training uh, 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 students uh, uh, in, in, uh, in physics. Uh, um, we organize conferences and workshop. Um, just take a look at our website and you'll find plenty of uh, different activities taking place throughout the year. We try to keep a balance in terms of geographical distribution for our, the people who come to visit ICTP for our programs. As you can see, almost all continents are, are equally represented. Uh, we had 192 countries represented in the last uh, 20 years. Uh, as you can see, we also have a large number of people coming from uh, Europe and North America, 
uh, or to, from developed countries, because we really believe that uh, uh, ICTP must be a place where scientists meet, right? Where scientists uh, from the developing world can meet their colleagues from the developed world and can start, uh, uh, can initiate collaborations uh, in their own in their own fields of research. So for us. Uh, uh, making sure that we have a large participation also from Europe, North America, and other places is essential to 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 you know, create this uh, the right mix uh, here uh, here in Trieste. By the way, we normally support financially uh, scientists coming from the developing world, but we do not support financially uh, scientists coming from the rest of the world. Uh, which uh, so the num the, the the figures for Europe and North America are also a measure of the quality of our programs. If people come, it's because the programs are are very high quality. As I said already at the beginning, uh, we're still struggling in uh, ensuring a, 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 what would be the fair representation of women in our programs. Uh, the figures we have, at least we had before COVID, 26% are essentially the average of uh, uh, the average percentage of women doing physics uh, in, in the world. Uh, we are trying to improve on that, but it's actually extremely difficult, but we have several programs. We'll have next year a special program on career development for uh, women in physics. You'll, we'll, this will be announced soon on our webpage, and uh, if there is anyone among you interested in participating, you're more than welcome to apply, of course. Uh, finally, um, I'm almost done. Um, the, um, we are trying now to create uh, branches of ICTP in uh, places which uh, used to be on the receiving side of, ICT, uh, of, of ICTP. Right? There are places like Brazil, China, for example, that uh, 20 years ago used to send their scientists to ICTP to receive training. Nowadays, they're becoming you know, powerhouses of uh, research in physics. And so what they decided to do is to help their own regions uh, by using the ICTP model. So we, they asked us to create uh, uh, branches of ICTP in their own countries. I mean, Brazil for Latin America, China for the Asian Pacific region, Mexico for the uh, Central American region. And then we have this uh, very important partnership with the Rwandan government. And so we have recently established a branch in uh, an uh, East African branch uh, of ICTP in Rwanda. It's called IFAR, uh, the uh, East African Institute for Fundamental Research. Um, you're more than welcome to, uh, you know, to check uh, what uh, this institute is doing. Uh, we're organizing ICT, a number of ICTP workshops and activities there. We're, in, we're collaborating with uh, colleagues in this institute. Uh, we would like really this place, uh, IFA Rwanda, to become the international hub of physics for the, for the African continent in the, in the near future. And uh, just to, I mean, very, uh, popular testimonial, um, uh, 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 Stephen Hawking, uh, he was himself a fan of ICTP and he's uh, been frequently you know, supporting us. Uh, he actually confirms that uh, as far as he can see, I mean, this is, this is ICTP has had a major impact in supporting sciences in the, in the, in the developing world. And with this, I wanted to thank you. Uh, feel free to contact me by email. Uh, you can easily find my email and name uh, on Google uh, uh, or through uh, uh, social media. I'm very happy to keep in contact with anyone who's interested to know more about, uh, about all, I, all I said. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Sandro, for a fantastic and uh, inspirational talk on the, on the role of basic sciences for sustainable development, <laughs> as, the, as the title of your talk very appropriately mentioned. Yeah. Um, it's time for, for, for questions. Um, there is one question in the Q&A that I will address immediately. Uh, but please, if you have um, questions, you're also welcome to raise your hand uh, virtually, and, and I will give you the right to, 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 to talk uh, immediately. Uh, the question in the in the QA, uh, Sandro, you 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 addressed it already at a high level. Uh, it's by Winfried uh, Mulva, and he says, "Hello, Professor Scandalo. In Kenya, we are facing serious food shortage. Is it possible to have basic science in relation to food security?" That's a very good question and a very difficult one, actually, because I'm not an expert in the field. And uh, very nice to to see you, Winnie. By the way, uh, I'm glad that you connected. Uh, I think we met on the occasion of several schools uh, in the past. That's a good question. I mean, I have to say, I, just based on my own experience, I'm sure there are many other ways in which we can, uh, you know, address food security using uh, 
uh, uh, sorry, food shortages uh, uh, using basic science. But when I came across very recently, actually visiting the headquarters of the IAEA in, in Vienna, is the role that uh, um, radiation has in, uh, uh, in uh, ensuring food preservation uh, and, and, uh, and food security. Also the role that isotopes uh, uh, have in tracing, for example, uh, the origin of food. Um, now, these are all unexpected uh, applications of uh, very you know, basic and physics and nuclear physics concept that I was totally unaware of until a few weeks ago. And so, again, I'm not pretending to give you, uh, I don't want to give you a full explanation, a full answer to this question, but I just wanted to convey my surprise in learning that uh, basic science is, is in places where you it was totally unexpected for me to realize that how important it was to uh, use physics-based techniques uh, in the field of uh, food preservation and food security. There is also the aspect, Sandro, if I just may add my two bits and pieces, of the um, uh, study of the chemistry of fertilizers, yeah, because uh, you know the, um, the standard procedure is very costly because it requires high temperatures and high pressures. But but bacteria do it for free in the soil, yeah, and and we don't really know how they do it, yeah. So there is a, a big effort in even uh, within quantum computing that you mentioned earlier, yeah, to see if one can model using the best computers we might have to simulate and understand how we can do it better and even more ecologically friendly yeah because we don't want to you know fix one problem and create another one yeah <clears throat> yes definitely yes i have colleagues here at the icdp studying using of course a fundamental chemistry um, uh, quantum chemistry tools uh, to analyze the properties of um, 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 compounds i mean natural uh, natural products uh, molecules that are extracted uh, in natural products, especially in Africa, and try to determine their properties uh, from a fundamental point of view. I think there is a, I mean, a very interesting line of research that could develop there uh, in ensuring that um, I mean, knowledge that's been accumulating uh, locally and traditionally over time can now be put on more solid basis uh, using you know sophisticated uh, techniques coming from chemistry. No, thank you very much. Are there any further questions for, for Sandro? Please don't be, don't be shy. It's a unique opportunity to interact with him. I think our audience are a bit shy this afternoon, Sandro, but maybe I can ask you because uh, the, the, everybody's probably interested. Um, what are the channels for people to come and, and visit you at ICTP? And maybe not specifically you as a person, but you as, an, as a representative of, of an institution and profit from the activities of ICTP. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Yes, so, so everything is on the ICTP website, uh, ictp.id. Um, all our programs are listed there. They are listed also, uh, the grouped. Uh, per um, you know, category of interest. That is, if you're a student, uh, you will find information about opportunities for students. If you are an um, advanced researcher, there will be opportunities for advanced researchers. Uh, there are several, I mean, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, give you a list uh, here. There are opportunities for students, but also for advanced researchers to come and visit ICDP, to participate in the conferences. Everything uh, has to be done through applications. Uh, the calls are announced on the webpage. So whatever program we run, uh, there is an application form, there is a deadline, please you know, pay attention because deadlines, uh, there are several deadlines. I mean, every day, every week, we have deadline about something. Uh, but if you identify your program you're interested in, make sure you apply and you motivate your application, right? Uh, it's unfortunately very competitive. We can uh, accept, uh, I would say, less than 20% of the uh, candidates that apply, unfortunately. Um, so make sure you write your application and motivate it uh, uh, properly. Um, and of course, I mean, for conferences, the application uh, opens uh, several months ago, typically six months in advance. For uh, annual programs, the application is normally uh, in the second half of the year before. Um, so you have to identify the program you're interested in, uh, click on that and you'll find information about deadlines and how to apply. 
Yeah, no, thank you very much. And um, you, you mentioned the MOU with uh, with NITEX, uh, between NITEX and ICTP. And as part of this MOU will be uh, some ring fence funds to support exchanges between ICTP uh, and South Africa. Yeah, so that um, starting probably next year, we, we will have a, a, a system in place to facilitate the participation of some South African students and researchers in activity of, uh, of ICTP and the other way around. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, really looking forward to that, Francesco, because this is really, I yes. mean, traditionally had a strong uh, interest uh, from South Africa uh, for the activities of ICTP. And this is really a way for us to reinforce uh, this uh, relationship and make sure this flow of scientists both ways uh, uh, continues and actually get uh, enforced uh, uh, for the future. Yeah, I've been myself several times in South Africa, and I would, I'm really looking forward to be back soon, actually. Yeah, and, and the other way around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, excellent. I think Win Winfred asked whether we recorded the, 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 the talk. We, we did, uh, Winfred, and uh, give us 24 hours, and it, you will find it in our YouTube channel. Ah, sorry, there's another question for you, Alessandro. <laughs> now they are popping up uh, by Afia Akiaf. And sorry if I don't pronounce it correctly. Uh, please, is there any opportunity for a PhD student to study machine learning in relation to perovskite solar cell at your research center? Wow, this is a very specific but interesting <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah. um, um, yes, I mean, OK. So uh, first of all, I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, area of research. Machine learning is now pervasive. I mean, you find machine learning everywhere. Uh, but being myself, uh, you know, in the field of uh, computational material science, I can tell you that it's really revolutionizing our field. Uh, the way machine learning is uh, helping us, uh, for example, uh, 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 refining and developing good uh, potentials for, uh, for example, molecular dynamic simulations or for uh, structural characterization of uh, of uh, materials is, uh, is really, you know, as I said, revolutionizing the field. Now, um, specifically about your question, your question is, is really specific. I mean, addresses a very specific problem. So this can be addressed by, uh, uh, probably the best way to do that uh, is to apply for a short visit to the condensed matter section of ICTP, uh, which is where the uh, main experts in this field uh, are based. Uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Nicola Seriani or uh, Ralph Gebauer, or Ali Asanali, uh, they're actually working on this topic. And um, so uh, there will be, I guess, uh, soon, if it's not already out, a, a call for applications for short visits um, to come to STP to spend uh, you know, one week, two weeks, one month uh, here and interact with uh, the local experts uh, here. And the hope is that, I'm not sure whether you are in South Africa or not, but in case you are in South Africa, there will be also an opportunity to take advantage of this uh, additional uh, program that we are launching soon that Francesco was describing uh, a minute ago. Thank you, Sandro. And now um, um, Professor Janne Litze asked, uh, wants to ask a question and um, Zurab, you're welcome to unmute yourself and, and you're ready to go. Uh, thank you very much, Francesco. Uh, thank you to the speaker for, for his talk. Um, so I, I was browsing the ICP website. I noticed ICTP website, I noticed that there is a section on mathematics as well. Uh, and then I and I saw that uh, th there are a list of uh, uh, people who are listed as associates of uh, the institute. Mm -hmm. um, what does it mean to be an associate in in that same mathematics section um, mm -hmm. at, at your center? Okay, thank you, Zara, for the question. So associates are scientists uh, in their I mean uh, with a permanent position, normally in their own countries who um, expressed the desire to come to ICTP to visit ICTP for a period of time, uh, say a few months every uh, two years for a period of six or seven years. Okay, so it's a possibility, it's an opportunity to come regularly to ICTP. Uh, one has to apply. And uh, if you're selected, you get a chance to uh, visit ICTP regularly, say three times over six years for a period of uh, one or two months every time. It was something that Abdul Salam, which was actually one of the first programs that Abdul Salam started when he, uh, when he uh, created ICTP. He said that he wanted to give scientists in developing countries the opportunity to recharge their batteries. And I think it's really a wonderful way to describe the program, right? You come to ICTP, you're just uh, completely free of uh, you know, administrative duties, uh, 
uh, no teaching, nothing, just time to do research and talk to colleagues and go to conferences. And uh, yeah, so this is the spirit of the program, essentially. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, sorry, Francesco, can I ask a follow-up yeah, question? No, please, please, please go ahead. Uh, the, uh, the more yeah. So the, the, uh, the, the, when the applicants are selected for associate, does it mean that the applicants whose research area kind of matches with the ones that, that are your permanent staff will get priority or, or you don't look necessarily specific mm -hmm. area? Yeah, I mean, we certainly value uh, the possibility. I mean, we want to maximize the uh, the, the um, impact that we can have on the whoever comes to ICDP. So having some sort of uh, overlap with the uh, scientific interest of uh, whoever is here is, uh, I wouldn't say a top priority, but it's something we certainly look at. Uh, uh, however, we also we, we are also welcoming associates uh, in different in areas that are not uh, uh, our own, especially if they bring this expertise and make it available to other visitors, right? I mean, we assume, I mean, our associates are top scientists in their field. Uh, and so we expect them when they come here to, uh, you know, also interact with the other, the junior visitors, for example, or visitors who come from, uh, you know, least developed countries uh, to uh, disseminate their knowledge. So we also look into this kind of profile. So experts, top experts uh, in fields that we don't cover. Uh, just to complement uh, essentially the offer that we offer as permanent scientists from here. Wonderful. Thank you very much. That's very exciting. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Zura, for the questions. Then, Sandro, thank you very much for the exciting talk. And I just share.